Describe the vibes for us in Chicago. It is electrifying, it is joyful, and it is united. And that's really the message here today. As we stand together united to protect, preserve our liberties and our freedoms. This, the theme of this entire convention has been joy and has been liberties, protecting our liberties. You know, Joe Biden made the ultimate sacrifice. He cared about his job, but he loved his country more. And then you had the wonderful uh, communicators, the great communicators, and that was the Obamas. And then you had uh, President Clinton, who was the great explainer. And then you had Vice President, or soon to be Vice President Walt, who is the coach and who is like the neighbor next door that everybody wants and the father that everybody needs. And so it's been a wonderful and amazing, amazing convention, but we've got work to do. And so we've got to go out there and we've got to talk to others who may disagree with us and let them know um, that uh, the candidacy of uh, President Harris and Vice President Waltz um, obviously will lift up this country, bring us together, and most importantly, return us to normalcy. When you first saw the news about Biden and the almost immediate coalescing around Harris, what was your initial reaction, especially given the fact that you found yourself in similar historic positions throughout your own career? What was it like for you personally to see? So at the end of the day, um, a number of people are talking about the historic um, moment in time. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, electing the first black woman president will be, mean absolutely nothing. It'll be nothing more than a historical footnote. Because the question for me and for others is what do you do with the power that's in your hand? How can you make uh, transformation? How can you improve the lives of others? Um, and how can you recognize that there are so many needs right now across America and in my beloved state? And that's what I do each and every day with this fire in my belly to make a change and to improve the lives of individuals who are struggling and to ensure that all voices are being heard, even voices that I might disagree with, but all voices need to be heard, regardless of your political affiliation, regardless of your race, regardless of your sexual orientation. Everyone needs to be respected and their rights need to be protected and defended. And it's, you know, it's quite obvious that the change in the top of the ticket has injected a lot of enthusiasm into the race. I mean, we're seeing record fundraising. But how confident are you in her ability to raise excitement in the key swing states going forward? This is now a sprint to the first debate, to right. Election Day. It's all about the battleground states. And the reality is, is that not enough individuals have spoken to them. And that's why we have to respect all voices and make sure that everyone is at the table of power. And so I am confident that with all of this electricity, with all of this excitement right now, that millions will go to the battleground states, knock on doors, talk to individuals at their humble tables, um, and let them know that Democrats obviously have delivered. As you know, President Clinton said last night, it was Democrats who created more jobs. And it was only Republicans who only created one, one million jobs, that we created 50 million jobs. And obviously, given the stock market, Market, um, and given the fact that there's record unemployment, not only in New York, but across uh, a number of states, um, it, it's, it's clearly in the numbers, and numbers just don't lie. And last three quick questions. Yeah. Um, you've obviously known her for decades. Tell me something about Kamala Harris that we don't already know that's out there in the public sphere. What you see is what you get. Um, she's real, she's honest, she's humble, she's a proud graduate of my, of my alma mater, Howard University. Uh, she's just an amazing figure, and she's the most qualified candidate for president, more qualified than the last four presidents, as a former DA, as a former AG who went after banks during the foreclosure crisis, as a former vice president and former United States senator um, who has uh, known and visited a number of countries all across the globe, met with heads of state. She is uh, the most experienced candidate, and I'm confident that on day one, as she will get to work and address the needs of Americans and bring us all together. Now, you uniquely know what it's like to go up against Donald Trump. What advice do you have for her? And I'm also curious what you feel is her biggest vulnerability as a candidate. So you have to ignore the noise at the end of the day. She has a job to do. And as, you, and as I analyze the evidence and the facts, I had to make a decision with respect to whether or not I was going to bring the case. And for me to ignore the overwhelming evidence um, that Mr. Trump engaged in a patent and practice, practice of fraud, um, it would have been irresponsible of me to ignore those facts and the evidence and the law. Um, and so here we are. So despite all of the name calling, despite the threats, um, you've got to do your job. You've got to put your head down each and every day and go to work. And that's what I do. Do you think Kamala Harris has met the moment this week? Oh, clearly. Just look around you and feel the excitement. Um, listen, the, the, the ground has shifted dramatically. And right now, I am confident that one day, that day after we uh, uh, collect and count all of our votes, that we're going to wake up on that great, beautiful morning. And we will say, Madam President.
Lastly, before I let you go, I know you saw this coming. Would you be interested in a potential federal appointment under a potential Kamala Harris administration? I would be interested in applying for a job at Channel 12. <laughs> How do I respond to that? 